Something that I discovered about two, three years ago. Uh, now, this is nothing new. Thermography is not new at all. As you're going to see in a couple of minutes, as soon as we get this going, thermography was introduced to the U.S. back in 1972. So we're talking about more than 30-some years ago, right? And you say, well, how come very few people heard about it? In fact, that was my question at the time. I've been in medicine at the time about 20, 23 years, 22, 23 years, and I said, you know what? As an OBGYN, <clears throat> if I didn't hear about it, it couldn't be good, because I'm supposed to be an expert in breast health and disease. I didn't do breast surgery, but definitely was taught to diagnose disease of the breast. So I came to that field very skeptical, and after about 100 hours of training and, and seeing what it can do, I was definitely convinced that this is really the way to stop us before we get into crisis. Uh, and that's, that's the important thing. The problem with mammographies and the following. In order for mammography to see a problem, the size of the lesion has to be about one centimeter. That's about the tip of your finger, about this size. Usually it takes about seven to ten years to grow to that size. So you know the story of many women who go every year to have a mammography and every year is okay and then one year they say it's not okay and the first question out of their mouth is they say wait a minute I've done mammographies for what 15, 20 years, 25 years everything is fine now all of a sudden it's not well guess what the modality of mammography has limitation it has to be it's an anatomical study it looks at the breast from the anatomical point of view and it has to be a certain size before it sees it Thermography, on the, on the other hand, is a physiological study. In other words, it looks at the breast from a temperature point of view. Now, first thing to change in breast before you get a mass is really physiology. When we start to have either estrogen dominance, which we can get into it, but Dr. Izzo is going to speak a little bit about it as he explains about the test that can be done to find out about it. If we start having cancerous lesion in the breast, no matter how small it is, the first thing that happens, it calls for blood supply because it has only one mission in life, and that's to grow. Those blood vessels that get to the area are being perceived as increased heat. The cancer itself usually has high metabolic rate and definitely has a higher heat signature. The equipment we have is very, very sophisticated and very able to get small, minute differences of temperature between the breast. So it's not really just how warm or, or not the breast is. It's really comparison of both breasts and looking at them and comparing and reading a certain parameters by which we then interpret to see a risk factor. You see, as we said before, if we know that we are at risk to develop a problem, then we can do something about it. And what I like about this modality is that we actually have a protocol by which we can actually help women to prevent this disease from happening. That's the hope. Now, I don't want you to think that you're singled out because men have the same problem. In men, we have the prostate cancer. It's the same estrogen dominance. We're intoxicated with estrogen, men and women alike. As I said to you, this is not new. And back in 1972, Right, the government uh, actually the medical consensus indicated that thermography in its present state of development is beyond the experimental state of diagnostic procedure in the following areas pathology of the female breast, extracranial vessel disease, peripheral vascular disease, and musculoskeletal injury. Back in 72, 30, 37 years ago, yet. Uh, the insurance companies don't have a code for best thermography. And if you call them and say, why not? They say, you know what they're going to say? It's experimental. And they say, if you can cite that and say, you know what? Here, this is the where it was. You can find the reference to that. But good luck because they're not going to listen to you. But enough 
Women are going to complain. Hopefully it's going to be covered because right now it's not. Back in 82, the FDA approved this modality as an adjunct to mammography for just about 30, uh, you know, 20 some years. Again, as I said before, what's the difference between the two modalities? Mammography, okay, sonography, MRI, the test of anatomy, structure, they're looking for a mass, okay? That's of course mammography. Thermography, on the other hand, is a test of physiology. Takes, the, takes a look at about 5 millimeter in depth, but we believe that it's actually more than that. Okay, uh, and really what it checks is microdermal skin blood flow so results. W here in Long Island we have the highest risk for cancer, breast cancer, in the nation. We don't know exactly why, uh, we think that it had to do with the fact that it was agricultural land for many many years, probably has to do with pesticides and chemicals and the water uh, aquifer that we have here. One thing I tell my patients is that the ones that are still using tap water, please do not, don't use tap water. Don't even cook in it. It's just not, not safe. Not safe. In this country, we do about a million biopsies a year. 800,000 of them are negative. So you can just imagine how many women have unnecessary biopsies. And if you look at this, and, and if somebody says, well, why do we have so many biopsies? Well, when you look at mammography, and many times it comes questionable, nobody wants to take a risk, rightfully so. Well, what do they have to offer? Well, well let's do a biopsy. Let's do a biopsy. Well, sometimes it's necessary, but 8 out of 10, it's not. This modality may help you decide. I see a study which is uh, suspicious to me and I'm not happy with, what do you do? Well, I usually like to offer the first two, the ultrasound and the MRI. Why? Because they both do not have radiation. The problem with the MRI is that you're going to have a, a battle to do with the insurance company because it costs about $3,000 and they're not too happy to give it to you. Uh, and they want you to have first, guess what? The good old-fashioned mammography. So in other words, yeah, we have to pay first by getting radiated before they do the non-radiation procedure. Uh, <clears throat> but sometimes we win and sometimes, you know, especially if you're persistent, you really have to be persistent with them. Uh, and if we need, uh, that's what I recommend, MRI first, okay, in order, you know, to avoid the radiation. Uh, statistically, every mammography that we have, because of breast, com breast compression and radiation, we increase up our chances of getting breast cancer 1% per study. Now, how many of us are being called every six months because they're not sure? Or they do a one set and they're not sure and they say, come down for a little magnification. Well, all these carry radiation. Uh, for those of you who are interested, I have a lot of information on my website, okay, drdeckel.com, www.drdeckel.com, drdeckel.com. Uh, and you can read also some good articles about the, the flaws in the system as far as mammography and the fact that there's enough information there and enough studies, and yet traditional medicine is still unwavering in their support of this modality. Pretty, uh, pretty in interesting. Uh, blood profile, we have ways of looking in blood uh, tests uh, to see if we have any uh, possibility of having an unknown or hidden malignancy. Uh, we have one profile out of Florida uh, and we have another one out of Boston, it's called AMAS. AMAS, anti-malignant antibody and serum. Uh, unfortunately, that AMAS is not available in New York. It's the only state in the uni that you cannot have it. Aren't we progressive here? <laughs> I thought so. Uh, but if somebody wants it, we probably can arrange it through one of our more progressive states like Connecticut and New Jersey. 
Uh, this is a very good test. It gives us about 90% accuracy. It's not specific, so it doesn't tell us what kind of cancer we have. But if we get two of those, it has accuracy of 99%, which is pretty good. And again, it's a simple blood test. Okay. Uh, this is a normal breast. Okay. What do you see here? You see very smooth, no blood vessels, only right here. Uh, very few are like that. The majority of women will have vessels. This is the way we want it to look. This is the way it looks in color. And what do you see here? Very uniform. There's no major changes. You see the nipple is dark blue, dark blue, breast is blue. Uh, over here, no big changes. And when you look down at the bottom, which you can't see, but the difference between the nipples is 0.4 degrees, which is excellent because we said anything less than 1 degree is good. And the difference between the global breast is 0 0.2 degrees, which is excellent because anything less than 1.5 uh, degree in the global is good. Now this is not good. This is cancer. This is a 72-year-old patient of mine that actually felt something, she wasn't sure. And as you can see, we see a lot of vascularity here, but mainly here it looks like, you know, an explosion happened. This is really uh, typical. Uh, this was confirmed on biopsy and she was treated. I don't have a follow-up on her, this is just about six months ago. This is the same lady with color. So you can see the difference between this area here, how red it is, and this is all blue. So again, and this is striking difference. I mean, you don't have to, have it to, to be a physician to see the differences. Now the protocol that I, uh, I'm offering is uh, available for you to read. I suggest that you read uh, the book by Dr. Lee, uh, What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Breast Cancer. I believe it's a must read for every woman. It's all outlined there. 